Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It's a big buzzword now, superfoods. We see it everywhere. And we think that it's extremely healthy and good for you, but is it really? We're going to dig into that and and your health and your wellness, and let's see if these things that are called superfoods are really superfoods. She knows she's Dr. Cecilia Cervantes, and she's with MyQuantumHeal.com. Good to have you back on, Cecilia. How are you doing? Great to be here. It's wonderful. Very yeah. cold. <laughs> All right. Uh, first question out of the gate. Holidays are, are right here. Is eggnog a superfood? I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> uh, wish it were. Um, spiked with a little whatever. Um, but rum. I like no. rum. Yes, rum, rum. And we know it's not a superfood, but it's super sometimes, depending on what you mix it with. Um, what are considered superfoods or the labels that are given? Not that they necessarily are, but which ones do you hear are being called superfoods right now? Well, you know, there are a lot of, it's a marketing ploy. They, people want to sell a certain something and make it special so that you can only get it from them. Mm -hmm. uh, they use a lot of fruits for that, you know, weird, unusual fruits from tropical countries or wherever, you know, such as noni fruit or this or that. And, and they sell it in, in uh, different, different ways, you know, multi-level marketing schemes or what have you. But superfoods are really foods that are nutrient dense, that they're going to give you value. Foods that, that we need to eat, that our body needs, and that we can use our food as medicine. Those are superfoods. And they're all around us. As long as they're good and clean and they're not full of toxins, they can be pretty super. Okay. What, like, give an example. What would you say is a superfood <laughs> right now? Pick a vegetable. Let's go vegetable. Let's go vegetable. Uh, spinach or cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, all nutrient dense. And of course, you always have to be careful if you're on medications, you know, are these foods okay for you to eat? Mm. Uh, spinach, for instance, if you are on a blood thinner such as warfarin or Coumadin, has vitamin K, which is the antidote for, for, for the blood thinner. So you have to be careful and ask your doctor about those kind of things. But uh, otherwise, you know, those dark green vegetables, those uh, brassica vegetables like collard, uh, um, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, they're nutrient dense foods, as long as they're grown pretty much organically. So they don't have any toxins in, in them or, or, you know, insecticides and things like that. That's what you want to want to be careful of. Would you, would it be reasonable to say that really any vegetable is a superfood? Or is that just going a little too far? Uh, you know, most any vegetable can be a superfood for sure. Uh, as long as it, yeah, they, they're going to have antioxidants in them, uh, different nutrients, uh, minerals, mm. minerals that our body needs, magnesium, you know, micro, uh, you know, trace minerals. We need this to, to function in our body and we want to get enough of it. So we want to get nutrient dense foods. Back in the day, um, the farms were over farmed and they didn't, they didn't replenish the soils with nutrients. So we had a big problems because of that, hmm. right? Uh, so it's, it's important to put the nutrients back in the food. And that's why it's uh, into the soil. Uh, that's why we do more sustainable kind of, or farming where we're putting back compost and different nutrients into the soil, feeding the soil so that it feeds, feeds what we're eating and it feeds us. That's a lot of things we take for granted that the nutrients have to be in there. A lot of us just think, hey, it's dirt plant <laughs> things grow but uh if if you're if you're pulling a lot of stuff out of that dirt you're deplenishing uh what's in there here's what's been on my radar it's called a superfood i really really want your take on it and that is sea moss are you familiar no no it sounds like a sea vegetable and sea vegetables can be a superfood because they have they're you know they have nutrients in them such as iodine and things like that that are yeah. important I'm going to just, if, if I may just see, let me see if I pull it up here because I've heard so much about it and I thought about ordering some and because you can freeze it, you can mix it with different things. Um, I'm told that it's got everything you need 
All right, here's the clevelandclinic.org. And they say the benefits, we'll just pass the benefits. Let's go to, yeah, you're right about the iodine, of course, um, that it's got uh, almost 90% of the minerals that we need in sea moss. Um, and to your point, it obviously comes from the sea. Um, it's usually usually farmed in uh, the Caribbean, St. Lucia being one of the I islands. But I'll dig up on more on that. But uh, yeah, and, and I hear you don't even have to have a lot of it, like a tablespoon, two tablespoons a day would be enough. But apparently, allegedly, reportedly, <laughs> it's got all these things in it that we're supposed to, we could use. And that's why people call it a superfood. That's legitimate. You know, if it's dense with the nutrients that you need and you don't have to take a lot of it, mm -hmm. um, why not? Yeah. And I like what you said before, organic. Really, ever since we talked about that previously, that's what I search for. You know, you pay more for it. But when you realize what is actually going on in our food supply and how many toxins and pesticides are in our food, it's like, yeah, go, go organic as long as it's certified and it's a legit organic yes uh if it and if it's you know it might not always be certified but if you know the grower mm. because getting certified is expensive um then speak to the grower and find out how they grow things if you have a have time to visit where they're growing things you can you can do that as well but yeah if you if you trust that it is uh grown in an organic fashion um yeah, that's what you that's what you want to what you want to take in because there are so many toxins in the environment. It's out of control how many toxins there are. And this is what's also contributing to a lot of chronic disease. We need to look at this more carefully. Absolutely. It almost surprises me that we're not looking at it more carefully. Well, I think we there's an attempt, uh, but uh, you know. Uh, companies uh, make a lot of money off of these products and it takes a lot of money to clean their act up as well. Mm. So I <laughs> say no more <laughs> read the body language. I get it. Uh, yeah. It, that, which, you know, comes back to you are your own health advocate. You're the one that's got to make sure what you're eating, you know, buyer beware. It's all out there. If you can pick that and it is organic, that's your choice. Or you can pick the other stuff, uh, maybe farmed by a big company or connected to a big company. Um, that's not going to clean up the rack because it costs a lot of money. How about some of the other things that we could be or should be eating? Well, uh, we talked about the dark green vegetables. Those are those are incredibly uh, nutritious for us. Uh, fruits and fruits and vegetables are the big things. Citrus fruits are very good. Vitamin C, rich in vitamin C, good for our immune system. Um, okay, let me ask you a question because this one's on my, my radar as well. Had orange juice for the first time in, I couldn't even tell you, five years the, the other day. I was like, hmm, I remember that. It was pretty good. Okay. What are your thoughts on a glass of orange juice a day? Too much sugar, natural sugar in it? Uh, making sure it is real fresh squeezed orange juice as opposed to something else? If it's fresh squeezed, good. You know, a small class of orange juice isn't going to hurt you. It is concentrated sugar when it's juiced. Uh, so that's what you have to be careful of. And uh, if if you have issued with blood sugar, if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic or whatever, uh, you don't want to have too much of that. So mm -hmm. limiting that. You know, limiting drinks that have sugar in them in general, that have uh, a lot of calories in them, and usually it's from sugar. You want to limit that and have more water. So I'm I'm taking away from this that there really is no health benefit. I mean, back in the day, it was, you know, vitamin C, have your orange juice, it's good for you. But what I'm hearing here is it's just a glass of potentially natural sugar, assuming it's fresh squeezed, but doesn't really seem like it's that beneficial for you. It's, it can be beneficial, yes. I'm not saying that it's absolutely not beneficial. It's just okay. that it's a lot of concentrated sugar. Better that you eat the orange because then you're also getting fiber. Yeah. Okay. So what about this? Orange juice, apple juice, kind of the same thing. If you had to pick, which would you pick? Mm, uh, 
I'm not sure. <laughs> I think okay. we're we're, uh, we're mixing apples and oranges here now. I, I guess I guess we are. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean to, but you know, because I always my daughter loves apple juice, so I always have it in the refrigerator. And then I'm looking at you know orange juice. Does it really come down to the amount of sugar content in there? If you want to make that you know more finite decision between the two. Well, fresher is better, and uh, orange juice may have a little more sugar. Uh, I believe that apples are going to have a lower glycemic index, so that the apple juice might be a little better. And you know what you can always do is flavor your water with the juices. That's another way of 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 doing it as well. So are you saying have a glass of water and just add a little bit of juice in there just to give it a little pop, a little flavor? Or dilute the juice with some water. Yeah. So you're not getting as much sugar. You know, it's so funny. Uh, the other day, I was running low on apple juice. So I did that. My daughter picked up on it right away. <laughs> she right away. And it wasn't even a lot of water in there. But she's like, no, nah, nah, this doesn't taste the same. Yeah, okay, you got me. I was running low, added a little bit of water to it. Uh, I would also think, too, that if you have digestion issues, if you're going to have that orange juice, it's going to be more acidic. It's going to be a little more acidic. So, yeah. That's, All right. You know. What are the other things we should be eating? I mean, if we call them superfoods. What else is on your list of uh, Cecilia approved uh, food items? Well, uh, nuts and seeds are great snacks. Mm -hmm. Nuts and seeds. They have a lot of minerals in them and trace minerals as well. Um, it's, it's got fiber as, in addition to that, so that, uh, so you're winning out. So you can use, you can snack on that instead of snacking on other junk food, say. I would make one suggestion, and this is based on my experience, take the portion and put it separate from the can of nuts or the jar of nuts. Cause I'll find myself just keep going at it. Like just grab in and work in, grab another, grab another. And you know, now you're looking at, you know, you just had four or five servings. And now, now you're being counterproductive, too much fat. Hopefully it's uh, not too much sodium. I always pick, if I can, uh, no salt added nuts. Right. Yeah, you want no added salt. If you can have them raw, that's even better um, mm. than, than, than anything else. So, and yeah, just a handful of nuts. That'll get you through. It's got some protein in it. it it's got some fats in it, but it's, you know, it's the nut fat, so it's better than fried foods or things like that right yeah and um, i think we also have to wait like you have that handful of nuts and you're like mm, okay let me go for another one uh because I, I need a quick snack but give it some time to get into your stomach and and so your system actually realizes that you ate something exactly you know we have a habit of just kind of hand to mouth hand to mouth that's a yep. habit you know yep, so yep. you've got to you know just kind of let it digest a little because your 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 stomach will eventually tell your mind you're full. You don't need any more. Yep. And what else should we be eating? Well, um, fermented foods uh, are very good. Um, fermented foods have probiotics in them, so it's good for the gut. Uh, it feeds your gut. You can have you can have uh, you know sauerkraut uh, is a fermented food pickles and things like that with as long as it doesn't have too much salt in it mm -hmm. you can make your own fermented foods kombucha is a fermented drink made with apple cider vinegar very healthy for you gives you back those probiotics mm -hmm. um you can have that every day if you want it you know it, it uh, it's just going to help feed you feed your body and get that gut keep it in good condition so fermented foods, great for as a probiotic, as a natural probiotic, instead of having to take a separate probiotic, you know, have it in your foods. Uh, kefir, which is made from, um, from milk, right? Uh, milk product uh, is kefir. Uh, they have cultures. You can make your own kefir and it's excellent. I like to have that every so often and you can have it with fruit. You know, they make fruit flavored kefirs. So it's a nice little snack as well. Uh, yogurt, very important. Uh, the Greek yogurt, very healthy, has a lot of uh, good probiotics in it as well. So and that protein. we're feeding our body the nutrients that we need. And everything's working together so that we get that, that balance. Uh, proteins, uh, as far as proteins go, eggs is an excellent, you know, it's a perfect protein. And you can have eggs, you know, an egg every day. Okay. 
I, I've always wondered about that. And uh, because there is some cholesterol there, but is it good cholesterol in eggs? It, 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 yeah, it's fine. You know, okay. it, it's a natural protein. And uh, there was a lot of hype about, oh, eggs are too much cholesterol. Now, but if you if you cook it with a lot of uh, of oil or grease or whatever, if you fry them, then you're going to get more cholesterol, you know, some of the bad stuff. So you can have eggs in many different ways, but it is a perfect protein. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else. Um, tea, tea is very good. Green tea, especially, uh, very helpful. Has uh, some chemicals in it that are anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory. So the foods that have anti-inflammatory properties have all these uh, nutrients that are anti-inflammatory help to reduce that cancer risk or disease risk. Any of those are very good. So have you know a cup of, or two of tea a day. You know, green mm. tea especially very helpful mm, i gotta get uh, into tea you know every i it's i'm never thinking about it but if i go somewhere and have it i think wow this is good stuff you know it's i, I maybe buy an assortment and and start there you know what i did start drinking and i'm very curious your thoughts on it almond milk oh yeah nut milks are yeah you're not getting you're not getting the lactose if you have lactose intolerance nut milks are very good you can use them in smoothies as well. Mm. Mix them with different things. I've actually found, uh, you know, I know people can be picky about milk products and putting them on cereal. Once you get in the habit of doing anything, then you just continue doing it. It's all great. And yeah. I was the same way. I started putting almond milk in cereal. It's like, it's a little bit different here. And now it's like, I look forward to it. And I don't know why. It's, I guess, maybe because psychologically it's healthier. Uh, it's got a different flavor to it. It's still kind of rich and creamy. Um, and I did find one, costs a little bit more, but it's got 10 grams of protein in one serving. And you don't have to refrigerate it. You know, I, I, so I, after opening, yes. But prior to that, I'll buy a few of them, throw them up on the shelf, then I'm never going to run out. And uh, it's perfect. 10 grams of protein. It's like having regular milk. Yes. No, it, it, it's wonderful. It's got that little bit of a nutty flavor to it. You can add different things to it. You can have fruits mm -hmm. or different spices to it. Hmm. Didn't Never thought of that. You can flavor it with whatever you want. You know, that's, it makes it very easy. All right. You started on proteins. What about meats? Uh, meats... Uh, if you're going to have red meats, make it grass fed, you know, again, the, the organic as much as possible. When, okay. Let's go there. Yes. Grass fed. Grass. What is the definition of that? Well, it's a, it's an, a, a grass fed means that the, the, uh, the cow or the, the bison or whatever is out in the field eating grass. They're not caged up all okay. the time and they're eating good, fresh, clean grass. Uh, and ho and hopefully the land doesn't have any toxins in it, heavy metals and things like that. That's that's the thing is, um, what is the animal eating? Are they eating and are they getting shot up with uh, steroids and antibiotics and things like that? Um, because if they are, then that's what you're getting as well when you eat it. So as clean an animal as possible. And if they're out there living the life, eating off the grass that's even better they're in a better mood as well they're not in a stress condition yes you will get those stress hormones in you as well that you know i'm glad you said that because i was just about to to bring that up and somebody brought that to my attention recently even in the and th this was a, an energy healer somebody a reiki master and they said the same exact thing that what what that animal is going through you could be going through you're eating what they're eating um, and the stress. So the stress hormones that come from an animal that's stressed out, it's just, the, I don't even want to think about that, you know, the, how sad that may be. Um, how does that affect us? Well, you know, those chemicals are in, in the meat. And so then we're, we're eating that as well. Exactly. You know, I just feel better about not having to you know, I, I've become more guilty about eating animals because my husband is vegetarian. And so I eat it just occasionally. And so I'm very careful mm -hmm. as to what kind of animal I eat and and wh what kind of life they've had. And mm -hmm. well, how were they, how were they, you know, uh, processed? 
you know, all those things are important. Um, taking in that energy, there is this whole talk about energy. We've never talked about it yes. uh, in depth before, and we can always do that another time. But uh, you take on the energy of, of whatever is in the field, whatever is out there, you know, and so you want to be careful of about that as well. I just got this visual of what life may have been like many, many years ago where there was less disease, stress bringing, you know, things that stress has brought on for all of us. And that goes back to our food supply. You think of, you know, that, that cow, you know, back in the day, he was just grazing, hanging out. That was his thing. Yeah. Um, he became part of our food supply. But to your point, now it's a different situation potentially. Um and what they're going through and and same thing with all pesticides and everything uh, it's just uh, <laughs> go back a hundred something years what what we were dealing with health wise and what we're dealing with now do you really feel that because of the situations of our food supply that has a lot to do with it oh yes you know and then we eat a lot more mm. back in the day we ate what we killed and you didn't always you know you didn't kill something every day so you weren't eating a, a bunch of meat all the time. Like you weren't having a big barbecue fest. Uh, yeah. We gorge on meat nowadays. You know, we gorge on these things. And that that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case back in the day. And also, if you look at, the, say, the Native Americans, they would always honor the animal that they killed. There was that exchange of, of energy. It's like, thank you for feeding me. That gratitude is very important. We, we have gotten away from the gratitude even though we celebrate thanksgiving every year it's usually a gorge fest and it's like well you know i'm, I'm grateful for 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 my life and for my health and for everything that comes to me and, and and for my family my friends you know what are we grateful for so that that's important as well mm. yeah that says a lot and yes on the on the meat side it wasn't readily available back then now it's <laughs> get whatever you want you know, Amazon will deliver, you know, in, in four hours, they'll have that meat, you know, at your door or any other, you know, DoorDash, um, anybody, um, Instacart, you know, you got it when you need it. So yeah, we're just picking out and, uh, and then you factor in what we said before, all the toxins, all the pesticides, all of that. Have they done research where you notice there's a huge a difference in in our health i mean they didn't do the same kind of research and numbers you know back then but is it a remarkable difference you know in your view yeah i think there's more more chronic disease more uh diabetes heart disease all these uh all these uh chronic diseases that we have now have increased they've increased over time and um they've also increased with the electrification of the world that's another toxin, uh, electromagnetic uh, waves, electromagnetic radiation, more radiation on the planet as well from technology. Wow. See, I don't even think about that. I was just thinking about the food, but these are all things that are environmentally around us. Yeah. Wow. You have to think of everything in a holistic manner, everything that affects us, the air we breathe, the water we drink food we eat the dirt that that uh, you know our food grows on yeah. everything and it's also you know we live in such a stressful time now that we feel that we deserve it so i'll just pick out it's okay you know i i, I worked really hard i'm gonna eat more i'm gonna eat i don't care what it is i'm just gonna grab for it where you're just doing yourself unfortunately harm it's okay to treat yourself right but right in in the in the bigger picture uh, you're doing yourself, your body, your mind a, a disservice by by doing that. But it's understandable because it's brought on by by stress and and uh, conditions around us. That's true, and you know it's it's also the thoughts that we think they could be toxic as well. So then we're taking in all these toxins on all different levels. Uh, we need to develop more mindfulness uh, and 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 look at things and you know what's really important. Uh, what's important to our health and to our body? And what thoughts are we having? You know, right. are they are they are they happy thoughts or or are we always in in stress mode? That's not healthy for us. Do you find it stressful for you as a doctor with all the knowledge you have, uh, especially when it comes to food? 
when you make your choices, does that add a layer of stress for you? Are you continually like checking labels and, and just looking at everything you eat? It's become a habit to check labels. You know, where where's where is this food? Where is it coming from? Sure. Where is it grown? Are there chemicals in it? Uh, all sorts of chemicals. You know, what are the ingredients in the food? Um, hmm. I, I do. I do. You know, it becomes a habit to look at that and to, and to kind of get a feeling for yourself. How do you feel about this food? Does it look like it, it, it's right? Or, you know, is the color off? Does it look healthy? Because hmm. you're going to put it in your body. And, you know, it's interesting, too. Like we talk about that. Uh, we just mentioning that you can have anything delivered at any time. So what does that also do? You're moving less, your body, <laughs> getting the same exercise, and you're just clicking. So you're probably ordering things without really looking at the ingredients. You can look at them online, but a lot of us just, I'll, I'll take that, I'll take that, I'll take that, check out. Um, so when you start really microanalyzing a lot of this, it's what, what a different way of life. And again, you know, the late 1800s or sometime around then. Yeah, it's it's just a cleaner life to really yeah. look at the food and and taste it when you eat it, not just shove it down your throat. We're we live in a fast paced world and we tend to eat fast and think fast and everything fast, fast, fast. That doesn't feel very good and it's not good for you. Yeah. You need to digest, you need to take your time, and you need to enjoy what you're eating and what you're thinking. You know, and, and everything that you do, you know, living more in the moment. I think, Cecilia, digest is the best word because, of course, food digestion, but digest everything around you, your thoughts, everything. Take it all in as opposed to just, you know, crank it on out and, uh, you know, live faster, which is not uh, helping us. You know, it's just adding to the stress. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just a, a rat on a wheel. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> not a nice life. No, you know? not at all. Uh, I can't believe the holidays are just about here. Here we go again with more bad food choices coming. <laughs> or we can make better choices. This is the time of year where you can sort of sit back and reevaluate your life. Yes. Make some decisions. You don't have to overwhelm yourself with anything. Pick one thing that you might want to get rid of that doesn't serve you mm. and pick Pick something else that you want to start doing more of, like going out and enjoying nature, going for a walk, and then you're getting some exercise. Yep. And, and just what you said, pick those things out that don't serve you. That also includes people. Just saying. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you have to just let go of, of things and of people also, especially if they're toxic and they don't realize it. You yeah. know, bless them and let them go, I say. Yep. Say that again. Bless them and let them go. Bless them and let them go. I like that because it's a more positive parting. <laughs> yeah, ways. yeah. Uh, Cecilia, always great having you with us. Uh, your website is myquantumheal.com. So much information there about everything we're talking about and also everything that you can offer and many things that you offer can be done virtually. And uh, I, I thank you. And I also want to thank you uh, for being here and uh, wish you and your family a very happy holiday. Yes, happy holiday to you and to everyone out there. Yep. All right. And uh, either we'll catch up next week or in the new year. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so All much. Right. Be well. Be coming right back. To Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network. 